The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Again, welcome to this worship service here from St. Mark's Anglican Lutheran Church in Midland, Ontario. I'm pleased to hear this week that the vaccinations in our local retirement homes have continued. But I also need to announce the, the death of Helen Henry, who passed away of COVID-19 in Barrie. She was originally from Port McNichol and lived her all her life, which lasted 101 years. May God console all those who mourn her passing and who have so little opportunity to share in their grief. But now let us join in prayer and open ourselves to the greater reality and unending, unlimited love of God. I invite you to join with me in prayer. Compassionate God, you gather the whole universe into your radiant presence and continually reveal your Son as our Savior. Bring wholeness to all that is broken and speak truth to us in our confusion that all creation will see and know your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The love of Jesus calls us our joyous praise to sing, our deeply felt thanksgivings we now together bring. For all God's many blessings unasked yet still received, for the generations who faithfully believe. Let us now listen to the Holy Gospel for this Sunday as we read it in the Gospel of St. Mark from the first chapter. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. Good news the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The love of Jesus calls us in swiftly changing days to be God's co-creator in new and wondrous ways. Let God with men and women may so 
that love and peace and justice may give God's kingdom And now may the love of God be our inspiration and may God's goodness shine forth in our meditation. Amen. Friends, again, the Gospel of Mark is the oldest of our four Gospels, the most concise, sometimes going against our expectations kind of gospel. This is the gospel that actually doesn't even have a manger birth. It goes right to the point. It focuses on the essentials. You might want to say with the gospel of Mark, there is no beating around the bush. It is straight to the point. And the story has barely begun in this first chapter of the Gospel of Mark, and we find us in the thick of it already. But what is this story really about? Well, we see it exactly in this Gospel message today. We see how Jesus the Christ is siding with humanity against all forces that prevent us from being who God intended us to be. Jesus sides with the God-given potential of life against destruction, death, and disease, dis-ease. This is meaningful especially in the Gospel of Mark. Jesus liberates a person who cannot live like he wants to and like he is intended to live. His is a spirit of limitations. Unclean, it is called in scriptures. Unhelpful, you might want to say today. Debilitating and separating this individual from society, from community, even from himself. And this unhelpful, limiting attitude is identified and overcome. The person is restored to a new way of living, healthier, whole, like God intended him to be. And this means a new way of thinking and seeing. You see, the story, the message of Christ is the liberating, eye-opening, life-giving effect of the experience of our faith. God has given us potential each and every one of us has gifts and talents, and we're called to develop and live out that potential for one another, for God's good creation, and for ourselves. You may be a good listener, or you may be good with your hands. And Christ wants to remove everything and anything that stands in the way for you to live up to and live out this gift of yours. And it is the truth of the matter, many things can get in the way. We can be too distracted by our own worries about money, about work, about family, about health. Too distracted to be able to focus on what is still possible, even under lockdown conditions. And so we develop over time an unhealthy, an unhelpful, a misleading kind of mindset, or as the Bible would call it, 
an unhelpful spirit. The story today contains the essential of Christ's message, a teaching with authority because it is not just theory. Jesus does not only teach this message from God in the synagogue, we are shown how Christ lives out this message and how he indeed has a liberating, life-giving effect on us. And the power of goodness outweighs the power of distraction and evil. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him, says the gospel. For some of us, this time of lockdown is like an imprisonment. We cannot do what we're used to do. For some others, it is a time of concentration. It is a little easier to take time off, to time for maybe a prayer even, for meditation, for journaling, and discovering what is still possible, and just being in holy presence. There will be a time after COVID-19. It will be different, I'm sure, and there will be a new normal, which we might have to get used to as well. But in this and in all the matters of your life, Christ's liberating, freeing, healing, and enabling power is present. And that power from God is with you today and right now. Jesus, and in Christ God, God's self, is on the side of humanity. Christ wants you to be the person you were intended to be. All God's goodness planted into your soul is freed by the healing message and influence of Christ. May you get to know and may you always live with this good news message. May you be who God wants you to be and share the peace you will have found. Amen. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess him king of glory now. It is God's good pleasure we should call him Lord, who from the beginning was the mighty Christians, this Lord Jesus shall return again on the clouds of glory with his angel train or all wreaths of empire meet upon his brow and our hearts confess him king of glory. We here still have the music Steve shares with us every week. And in that, for me and I know for you, we are enriched in faith and in hope. We here at St. Mark's still enjoy fresh flowers on the altar every Sunday, thanks to our dedicated volunteers who still serve the Lord. We all can do likewise as we come before God in prayer. I invite you to join with me 
responding with the words, Have mercy, O God, to let us pray. For all God's works in creation, for plants and animals, water, air, and soil, for forests and for farms, and for those willing to go the extra mile, protecting our natural resources and all that has been created, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For health care workers, public health servants, for researchers and decision makers, that they would be sustained in their efforts prevented from burning out in truly demanding times, and that we would acknowledge their efforts by following their advice and caring for them ourselves. Let us pray. Have Have mercy, mercy, O God. For those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit, those who are sick, and hospitalized, those suffering from all the uncertainties, and for those whose mental well-being is being challenged to the breaking point, for those who are hungry or homeless, and for all in any need, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the concerns of this congregation and parish and for the whole of the church. Those who miss being here and who feel isolated. For those celebrating birthdays or anniversaries by themselves. For the people of God in this place and for awareness of the path God wants us to go and for the other needs in our community of Midland, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the covenant God made with us in the waters of our baptism and in thanksgiving for those who have died in the Lord, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful and loving God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, who gave us words to pray together, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And now, may God, the Creator, strengthen you. May Jesus, the Beloved, fill you with goodness. And may the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you. And so blesses you, God, the Father, the Son, 
and the Holy Spirit, now and always. Amen. And so live in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>